you have no idea what you're missing. Most people have no concept of what our native landscapes are supposed to look like in the southeast because they've never experienced them. Longleaf pine ecosystems once dominated the south. Over two-thirds of the southeastern coastal plain, 90 million acres, were covered with various types of longleaf pine ecosystems. And only three to five percent of that remains intact. And the majority of what remains has been forever altered by historic fire suppression. The majestic beauty of a mature longleaf pine ecosystem is almost impossible for most of us to comprehend. We know from early reports that there were massive, large, old longleaf trees spaced very far apart with a dense and diverse understory of grasses and wildflowers. It's hard to comprehend the majesty of a 500-year-old longleaf. And almost every single one of those original old growth longleaf that blanketed the southeast were logged by the mid 19th century. After the initial logging, most of those ecosystems were replaced by agricultural fields and tree farms, which were planting the faster growing slash and loblolly instead of longleaf that belonged there. And what wasn't replaced was forever altered by fire suppression. Remember, these are landscapes that should have been burning almost every single year. And when you don't burn for just a few years too long, it can have lasting noticeable effects on the ecosystem. There are many different types of longleaf pine ecosystems. The majority of North Florida and Central Florida would have been what we consider longleaf wiregrass savannas. And these are ecosystems that are dominated by wiregrass, Aristida species as well as other grasses. And we would actually consider these ecosystems savannas or grasslands rather than forests because the grasses are the dominant species there. And they evolved in open sunny areas with just a few trees speckled about. These grasslands are highly sensitive to fire suppression. If you prevent fires from occurring for just a few years, hardwoods like these oak species begin to pop up and they do not carry the fire like the pines and the grasses do. They prevent fires from moving through the landscape. And they also begin shading out all of the wildflowers and grasses in the understory, and even shade out the regenerating young longleaf pine. Like many people, I grew up around oak woodlands that I thought were natural, but most of them in Florida aren't. They're the result of historic fire suppression. A lot of these oak woodlands you walk into them and there's almost no understory remaining. And there's kind of a tangle of a lot of vines, but not a whole lot of grasses or wildflowers on the forest floor. Sometimes you can find traces of what used to be there. You can see a few, you know, wire grass clumps here and there. Or if you look into many woodlands that you drive by in Florida, you'll see pines often shorter than the oaks themselves that are still persisting, but are not able to regenerate anymore. And those, those are a clue of what used to be there, an open pine savanna. Longleaf pine ecosystems are famously biodiverse. One of the most biodiverse ecosystems in North America and the world. And most of that diversity occurs in the understory, in the herbaceous plants like the grasses and the wildflowers that occur on the forest floor, and in the animals that depend on those grasses and wildflowers. So when we suppress fire in these landscapes, that diversity is lost, and that has reverberating effects on our wildlife and on our ecosystems as a whole. Next week, we will discuss more about the biodiversity of longleaf pine ecosystems.